If you're not using auto layout in Figma, you're missing out on a huge time saver. There's a reason why professional designers use auto layout. It keeps designs consistent, files clean, and saves a ton of time. If you have no idea what auto layout is, it basically mirrors what a CSS flex box can do in code. It allows you to align and distribute objects within a frame and define layout direction, padding, and the gaps between elements. This especially becomes crucial when you're designing something responsive or something that should grow and shrink as your screen size changes. The good news is auto layout is actually pretty simple and intuitive once you get your head wrapped around it. But there are a lot of properties involved, so before we jump into a real design, let's get the lay of the land with a really simple example using these shapes here. Okay, so I'm just going to illustrate how auto layout works using these simple shapes here so that you can get a really visual sort of lay of the land. So first, what we're going to do is actually frame these together. And there's a few ways that we can do that if you're not yet familiar with frames. One way is just by selecting all of these. And then what we can do is control click and then control click in the layers panel over here and do frame selection. And the shortcut for this is option command G. So here we have this frame, it's called frame one, and we'll just name the frame shapes. So that's one way to do it. I'm going to undo all of that and we'll do it a different way. So let's say I have a frame already that I wanna place these into. So I'm just gonna hit F on my keyboard or I could come up and click on the frame tool up here and I'm gonna create, maybe I want it to be square. So we'll name this square frame and then we can just drag all of these in. So those are the main ways to do it. There's also a way to turn on auto layout without first creating a frame. The other thing when it comes to auto layout is it's really flexible because you can have auto layouts within auto layouts within auto layouts. And we'll get more into that in our practical example after this, but it might just be helpful to show you that you can actually create an auto layout without first creating a frame. So I'm just going to drag these in. And again, I have this square frame, but these elements within it are not yet framed. But if I just select all of them and go over to auto layout and click the plus button, then it's created a frame that is also an auto layout. And that really is just sort of skipping that extra step. So I'll come in here and we can name this shapes. So now we can really explore what auto layout has to offer. As you can see, since I already had my elements aligned vertically, they're automatically going to be aligned vertically. And we can edit the gap within those a few different ways. We can just hover over the gap and extend or sort of contract it here. We can also do the same thing over here. And we can also just put in a value. So maybe we want 20 pixels between each. So here we have the gap between these. So it's saying vertical gap because these items are already aligned vertically. But what happens if we hit horizontal layout? They're going to align horizontally. And what we can do is also kind of even them out so that instead of them anchoring to the top, we can have them anchor to the middle. And we can do that by hitting this center align button instead of the pin to top button here. So I think that looks nice. And of course you can pin to any of these and we'll get more into to that later. Now we have these aligned horizontally. What if we want them to wrap? What if we actually want these shapes to be a lot bigger? So I'm just going to click in and make these shapes bigger. And so when they're bigger, they you can't really see all of them within this square frame. So what if I want them to wrap? So I'm gonna hit wrap over here, and then I'm going to take this frame and make it smaller so that they start to actually wrap and we can see them within this frame. So now this property changes a little bit too. Maybe we want to align to the top left or the center left. We can really kind of, um, we can really kind of play around with that. And whenever you have these wrapping, that also gives you this extra gap to play with. So let's say we want 20 pixels between the items in each line, but we want each row to have a bigger space, maybe 40. 
So we can really just get super granular with that. As this is now, we have it set to fixed. And fixed is fine, but I wanna show you some of the other ways that you can use auto layout. So I'm actually going to undo so that we go back to our smaller shapes. We'll zoom in a little bit here. And as you can see, since I went backwards, we went back to the default. By default, whenever you put something in an auto layout, it's going to automatically hug it from the vertical and horizontal. What hug means is it's actually going to hug the elements on all of the sides and we can control sort of how tightly they're being hugged. So if we come in here to the horizontal padding, we can give ourselves, let's say 40 pixels of space on the left and right. And we'll give ourselves the same 40 pixels of space on the top and bottom. And it's actually easier to illustrate this if we give ourselves a background fill. So I'm just gonna give ourselves a light gray fill here. So you can really see what this frame looks like. So here's where hugging really comes in handy. Let's say I want to decrease the space between these to 10. As you can see, it made this whole frame smaller because it's still going to hug those contents no matter what those contents are. We see this come in handy as well with things like text, which I will show you in the next example. So that's hug. Now, what if we switched this to fixed width? If we switch it to fixed width, it's going to get rid of sort of those properties that we were doing before with the horizontal padding. So if we just bring these to the left, that might be an instance where we want to have them pinned to the left, but we also want to have this fixed. Fixed just gives us the flexibility to make this frame as long or short or tall or wide as we want without it depending on anything that's inside of it. Okay, so there's one more option here that has not come up yet because you actually have to turn on auto layout on the frame outside of this auto layout in order for you to be able to see this option. So I'm gonna click on square frame and I'm gonna hit plus next to auto layout. So again, by default, it's going to make this square frame hug the contents inside of it. So it gave us a 153 pixel padding on the top and bottom and 24 pixels of padding on the left and right. But I just want this to be fixed. I just want this to be, let's say, a thousand by thousand for our square. And then what I want is for this to actually fill the container. So I'm going to switch it to fill container. And as you can see, it's not quite filling it because we've got that border. So we can do zero here and it's really going to fill it all the way up. So fill is super helpful because it allows for this frame to be dependent on its parent frame. And again, you'll see some more practical scenarios for this in the next example. But before that, I wanna show you a couple of things that are just a bit more advanced, I guess. So what I'm going to do is select on our shapes frame in here, and I'm gonna go over to the three dots and we can see what we've got going on. So we have strokes, stacking, and aligning text baseline. We won't worry about that because we're not using text now. But what I'm gonna do is actually give all of these shapes a stroke so that you can really see how this works. So then we'll go back in and as, and by default, it's going to exclude the strokes from the sort of equation here. So, so what that means is if we have these strokes on the outside of these shapes, those extra pixels on the outside aren't going to affect the auto layout here. So let's arrange this so you can really see it. I'm going to do hug contents and we're gonna make it kind of tight. We're going to do 10 and 10. So that exclude stroke means that if we hover over this, those 10 pixels that I put on all of the sides are not going to count the border. As you can see, when I hover over, that shaded area covers up that border because it's not including it in those 10 pixels. But by contrast, if we click on this frame again, go back into our stroke properties and do include and in layout, it is actually going to increase that spacing because now if we hover over, these 10 pixels 
are not overlapping with that stroke. So that is stroke. And now we're going to do stacking. So if I push these together and have a gap in the negatives, that is going to make them stack. So I'm going to give this a gap of, oops, negative 30, which means that they're going to overlap by 30 pixels. And so if we have that and we go into these three dots and do canvas stacking, right now we have last on top. You can change it to first on top. So you see now that the star is on the top instead of the hexagon being on top. Okay, I think that pretty much covers the basics. So now let's dive into this more practical demo. And what we're going to do is recreate this table using auto layout. And it might look complicated, but I promise once you get the hang of it, it's really simple and you'll be able to use these auto layout techniques with literally any layout. It's super, super helpful. Okay, so let's start with each line. Before we can even get to this whole table, we need to create the individual rows. So I have over here what content needs to be in these rows. So what I'm going to do is come over and hit auto layout on with all of that content selected. I'm gonna call this row and we're going to change this from vertical to horizontal. As you can see, we're already kind of getting there. Now I'm going to give ourselves a white background so that we can really see um, how this frame is coming together. And I'm going to also align these to the left, but also pin so that they are center aligned, if that makes sense. So if that's not clear at the moment, they are aligned left, but they're also aligned to the top. Right now, I want to align them so that a line could cut through the center of all of the items. That's what this is going to do. We still want it pinned left, but we want them center aligned with each other. Okay, so that's looking good so far, but we definitely need some padding on this. Let's give it 24 pixels of padding on the right and left. Let's see what eight looks like on the top and bottom. Close, I think maybe 12 would be better. Okay, that's looking good, but they're all really squished together, as you can see, and we don't want that. So let's give ourselves, instead of 20 pixels in between each of these, a 20 pixel gap, let's give ourselves more like 40, see what that looks like. Okay, 40 is fine, but we could definitely use more. Let's actually do 80. 80 is looking good. And then what I'm going to do is actually get a little bit more granular with the padding. I'm going to go into individual padding and I'm going to add more to just the right side because as you can see, we want like more space here. We don't necessarily want this to be at the very edge. So instead of 24, I'm going to add 80 here. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. So now we want to make sure that as we change the content in this row, it's going to behave how we want it to behave. So what I'm going to do is actually make this a component. So in order to do that, I can go up to this icon, create component or do option command K. So I'm going to do the shortcut. I'm going to click on this and do option command K. And this is our main component. So I'm just going to keep it up here and duplicate one down here and change it. See, see what we think. So here's our first one. And then let's say we have one just below it. And I'm going to change the information and let's see how it looks. As you can see, this is not behaving exactly how we want it to. In this table, all of the names are perfectly aligned on the left. All of the companies are perfectly aligned. All of these numbers are perfectly aligned and so on. And that is not how this is behaving here. And there's a really easy fix to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this in our main component so that the changes trickle down to our instances. And we're actually going to frame each of these individually. So we'll start here with the checkbox and I'm just going to do option command G We'll call this checkbox frame. Double click into here, option command G, name frame, company frame, amount frame, pill frame, and date frame. So now I'm going to select them individually and turn on auto layout. So we'll turn it on for that, turn it on for this, and now I'm going to select all of those auto layouts. And instead of hugging, 
I'm going to do fill container. And as you can see, that already really helped what these are looking like. They're much more aligned now. And so now we just have to make sure that the space in between these is making more sense. You can see there's a lot more space here and, you know, so on. So what we can do is instead of filling the container for this one, we can actually hug it because this, since it's an icon, is always going to be the same size. Let's decrease this to 40 to really sort of see what we're working with here. We can align this one to the left. We can actually get rid of this padding over here. So we can make it 24 like it was before. And it's just feeling a lot more evenly distributed and aligned. I think we're pretty good with this here. I'm just going to duplicate and create a bunch of these fields just so we can have them and then we'll work on this top section. Okay, this is looking good. I did notice one thing that I want to show you how to tweak. So at the moment, it seems like some of these longer names are coming a bit too close to these companies. So we can really easily fix that. If the names, if one field is going to always be a bit longer than others, then it's okay. Then it might be helpful to switch this from fill to fixed and actually extend it a little bit. So let's see how much it makes sense to extend. I think 160 would probably be good. And so then just from here, the rest of these are just going to fill the remainder of the space. So that effect kind of trickled down and these still all align really nicely. So that looks really good. Now that we have all of these, we're going to put them in an auto layout as well. So let's just do that. Let's just do that by selecting all of them and hitting this plus button over here. And we could call this rows. Okay, so it's automatically going to hug these. And I just had nine pixels of space in between these, but we really just need like one because I just want to be able to see like one little line sort of in between them there, like this example shows. That looks good. And now what I also want is to have this section up here. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And as you can see, because we have this in an auto layout, when I duplicate, it really just sort of stays in the same format and just makes it really seamless, which I love. What we're gonna do is just make this top row look like this top row here. So we're gonna just put name, company, deal. We can actually disconnect this from its component by doing detach instance. And that way we can actually get rid of this and put text in it. So pipeline, well, we'll just call it status to keep it simple and date. That is looking good, but we want to give this a different background color. So I'm just going to eyedropper that. Okay, perfect. And then the only other thing is we might wanna make this instead of regular, We'll make it medium so it feels more like sort of headings. Okay, this is looking great. The only last thing that I want to do for this is to give it a bit of a border so that when we put it in a frame, which actually, so that when we put it like on a white background like this, we want to have it stand out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is give this whole frame a background of the light gray. And what that's gonna do is allow for those gaps to really show through. So you can see the darker I'm making the background, the darker those lines get. Those are just the gaps that are showing through, um, but we can sort of use that to our advantage. So I'm just going to do it about here, should be good. And then I also wanna give this whole thing a stroke. So I'm just going to do the plus button there and then change it to outside and we'll change it to match that color there. Perfect, and then just to match this, we can also give this whole frame or this whole auto layout a bit of a corner radius. So let's just see what eight looks like. Yeah, it looks really nice. Awesome. And just like that, we've used auto layout to really quickly create this table. 
Now let's say we wanted to make this responsive. So this is seeming like a really good size for this iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch one. So this is really nice. We have like 65 pixels on each side. So that's good. But then what if we wanted it to look really good on like a big screen? So what if someone, you know, increased their browser and they were on a much bigger screen? Like let's say this MacBook Pro. 16 inch. Let's just duplicate this on over here. This is what happens if we extend it. So that's not exactly what we want, but the fix is super, super easy. So what I'm going to do is go in and select on each of our rows individually. And once I do that, I'm just going to switch it from fixed to fill container. And as you can see now, this is completely responsive to how wide we want our screen to be, how wide we want our table to be. So that is super, super helpful. Auto layout is so helpful in making things responsive and also just in saving time. If you enjoyed this crash course, I want to let you know we have a whole Figma course for web designers, which I'll link below, where we actually design a whole responsive e-commerce website from scratch. I go even further with auto layout, and we also cover other really critical features such as components, prototyping, and even multi-editing. I hope you check it out, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!